NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. This is the Tuscaloosa Regional Final at Rhodes Stadium. Alabama, winners of 42 straight regional games, playing for a spot in the Super Regionals against the Clemson Tigers, playing in a regional final for the first time in their brief program history. Alabama hasn't given up a run in their two games in the tournament, so they're 2-0. Clemson won an elimination game yesterday over Troy. Alabama needs one win to advance on to the Super Regionals. Clemson needs to win this game and then win a winner-take-all Game 7 of this Tuscaloosa Regional. Eric Freed along with the Tennessee All-American Madison Shipman and in the circle for Clemson, of course, it is the ACC Player of the Year, Valerie Cagle. Not just the ACC Player of the Year, but the ACC Freshman of the Year as well. She can truly do it all, Eric, but in the circle, she's going to throw with really high velocity. She brings the ball about the low 70s, and she's got great spin, great movement. She works all quadrants of the zone. She's got a rise ball to work up, and she's got a drop ball to work down in the zone as well. And she is going to have to really utilize that drop ball down in the zone again against this Alabama team. Alabama playing at home. They will be the visitors here in game number six of this Tuscaloosa Regional. Alexis Mack steps in to face Cagle. And Mack chops it foul at the plate. 88 degrees, sunshine at first pitch in Tuscaloosa as we take a look at our Capital One Alabama starting lineup with Mack. Hitting at 426, Bailey Hempel 427 on the season, followed by Tao and Jenna Johnson. Back on an 11 game hitting streak. Five for eight in the regional with four runs scored. Four of her five hits, Madison, bunt singles. So this is an Alabama team that has gone small to use their speed, and it has been quite effective in their two wins so, so far. Slaps in the center field, and it's another hit for the senior, Alexis Mack. That is her sixth of the regional. The speed for Alabama is their strength, and they have been on top of it throughout this entire regional. Take a look at the Clemson defense. Look at how far in they're playing, but Alexis Mack still is able to find a hole. This drop ball working down in the zone. She uses that to her advantage, hits it straight into the ground, right back up the middle to get a runner on board for Bailey Hemphill. The SEC Player of the Year facing the ACC Player of the Year. Senior takes ball one. Hempel four for five in the regional with seven runs batted in. As I mentioned, raising her batting average throughout the course of this tournament. There's a strike. It's one and one. And you saw there that stat line from Bailey Hempel in yesterday's game, two for two. And Valerie Cagle threw her really good pitches. Hemphill wasn't able to get solid barrel on it, but because Hemphill has such a sound fundamental swing, she was able to find holes out there in the outfield. This one is ripped foul, and it's one and two. Hemphill over the last five games, which are all postseason games, SEC tournament and now NCAA tournament, has found a way to elevate her game even more, hitting 636, four home runs, her on-base percentage for the season is now up to 583. Just absolutely insane the numbers that she's been able to put up. And a reason for that is her consistency up at the plate, her routine that she has every single time that she steps into the box. Fouled out of play. As you see, great crowd has turned out in Tuscaloosa to watch the Tide take on the Tigers. And they have been vocal. We were listening in pregame, and really the players were getting their fans fired up. This is a great atmosphere with a spot in the Super Regionals on the line. Another 1-2 from Cagle. There goes the runner, and it is a stolen base for Alexis Mack. That's her 24th this season. And now Alabama, we talked about small ball using their speed. They are now 9-for-9 nine nine on stolen bases in this regional.
And this was a great pitch to be able to throw out somebody on on the throw down, but the throw just a little bit offline. You see how it carries Ansley Gilstrap over to the second base side of second base, and because of that, Alexis Mack is able to slide easily into scoring position. Hempel was part of the 12th hit attack in win number one for Alabama. 9 nothing was the final over Alabama State. Her two-run home run ended things. Combined no-hitter for Lexi Kilfoyle and Crystal Goodman. Montana Fouts getting the start today for Alabama. And Hempel trying to spot her a lead. And these are great locations by Valerie Cagle as well, throwing them way low and inside so that all that Bailey Hemphill can do is foul them off over into that third base dugout. And here you got to wonder in a 2-2 count with first base open, if you're Cagle, do you stay outside of the zone, do not give anything over the heart of the plate that Hemphill can take advantage of? I know if I'm out there in the circle, I am being very careful about where I'm placing these pitches. Gets away from the catcher, JoJo Hyatt, and Mack will take third in the count is full to Hemphill. And again, that small ball, that speed, putting pressure not just on the infield defense, but on the catcher as well. Valerie Cagle, a heavy drop ball pitcher. This one down in the dirt as a catcher. You want to try to turn that glove over, get your chest in front of that ball to keep it in front of you. Because as soon as it skips away behind you, Mack is easily going to get into third base safely. Cagle battles back. She was ahead in the count, one and two. Hempel took her to a tenth pitch, and finally the freshman gets the strike out, and you can even see her teammate Pereira come in and give her a look like, you just got Bailey Hempel. No one's been able to get Bailey Hempel out. That is a great pitch. This is a great look at the off speed out of the hand of Cagle. It's not your true, typical changeup where she's going to take a lot of velocity off of it, but just enough to trick the hitter's eyes into thinking it's that hard rise ball coming in. And she gets Hempill out in front of that pitch. Bailey Tao takes ball one. You see the numbers this year for the freshman from Yorktown, Virginia, who's been outstanding at the plate and in the circle. And you can see not just in the ACC, but nationally, one of the very best. That misses. It's 2-0 and oh to Tao. Hagel here in the top of the first inning trying to establish that strike zone back there behind the plate. She's got great late movement on her pitches. That one looked like a good pitch to me, but I'm guessing maybe they're thinking that's a little bit outside, but a tough job for pitchers here going up against such a solid stacked lineup in Alabama having to adjust to that strike zone. Tao lifts one to right field. That's Oda moving over, tagging at third, and scoring is Mack, and it is 1-0 Alabama. And I think Kaylee Tao is going to be a key hitter for Alabama because teams might end up pitching around Bailey Hempel, but here she gets enough of this ball to drive it out into right field to allow Alexis Mack to easily tag up and score, and that's how important that wild pitch, that pass ball was on the catcher, JoJo Hyatt. You have to do whatever you can, knowing your pitcher's a drop ball pitcher, to keep that ball in front of you to try to prevent that runner from advancing 60 feet. But Bama able to take advantage of it. So the wild pitch is costly because that allowed Mack to get to third, as Madison mentioned, and Tao brings, Tao brings in the runner. 45th RBI of the season to put Alabama in front. Jenna Johnson grounds it off the third baseman, grabbed by the shortstop, Gillstrap, and Johnson's going to be safe.
This one hits straight into the ground over to Casey Bigham at third base. Alabama again utilizing the ground. This one she gets right in front of it and just takes one of those mid hops and skips off of the heel of her glove. So another error for this Clemson defense. Chopped back behind the circle and in time at first base to get the out. Good charge by Gilstrap. And the error is not costly, but Alabama jumps out. Crimson Tide playing in front again. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Alabama and Clemson meeting in the regional final in Tuscaloosa. Alabama on top, 1-0 as Clemson is ready to come to the plate. And they will face, for the second consecutive day, Montana Fouts. Montana Fouts is so good in the circle for Alabama because she continues to get better as the season goes on. She throws really hard, brings the ball in the low 70s consistently, but it's not just velocity that she relies on. It is spin and movement. She's got a rise ball, drop ball combination, and she'll also throw that curveball in there that breaks away from those right-handed batters. And she is so tough to hit out there in the circle because she is a unique combination of speed, spin, and movement. Speed, spin, movement, and command. Throw strikes has walked just three batters in her last five games. As you take a look at the Capital One starting lineup for the Clemson Tigers with Mackenzie Clark, first team all conference selection in the ACC, the freshman leading things off. Four for 10 in the regional, was two for three against Fouts yesterday. That's up high, it's one on one. Clark, the only batter in this Clemson offense that did not strike out against Montana Fouts started off that game with a ground ball over to third base, made the adjustments, able to poke one right back up the middle and drive another one through the 5-6 hole. But it's that calm, cool, collected mentality that Coach John Rittman likes in her in that leadoff spot. 16 strikeouts for Fouts yesterday, gave up four hits and going the distance and shutting out Clemson, did not give up a walk to the Tigers yesterday. Fly ball, left field. That's Alexis Mack drifting back for the first out. Take a look at things defensively for Alabama with Hemphill catching Montana Fouts. Mack, Brown, sides left to right in the outfield. Morgan and Tau, the corners on the infield with Clark and Woodard up the middle at shortstop and second base. If you have not seen Alabama play a lot this season, they're one of the very best teams in the country. They have won 15 consecutive games. That's a called strike. They've done it with great pitching from Montana Fouts. As Ainsley Gilstrap steps in. Gilstrap three for nine in the regional was two for four against Troy in that elimination game with a couple of RBI. It's one and two. Talking to Coach Rittman before this regional, he said that Ansley Gilstrap is one of the vocal leaders on this team. She leads by example. She is such a hard worker. And coming into this weekend, the only player on this Clemson roster that had regional postseason experience. Now, the entire team can say they've gotten a taste of the regionals being here in Tuscaloosa. But she's trying to share some of her knowledge of that experience with her teammates. This is chop two second. Woodard on the first two down. Of course, John Rittman has experience. Coached 18 years at Stanford. 750 wins with the Cardinal. Went to Clemson to build that program. 
Last year was their first season. Of course, it was cut short. So this is their first full season. First trip to an NCAA tournament. Obviously, all these firsts continue to pile up. First regional final. First time playing in the state of Alabama. But he is taking this Tiger program from nothing to a national player in a very short period of time. Here's Cagle. Strike one. When talking to Coach this week, we asked him, how were you able to do it? And I'm sure it's a long list of things that they have done well to get them to this point. He said it honestly happened a little bit quicker than they even anticipated. But for him, it was building the base from a good culture. That is what he wanted. He recruited the kids that had the characteristics, the personalities that he wanted in his program, and they have built it up from there. And you know, it also helps when you've got a fantastic two-way player like somebody like Valerie Cagle to lead your team as well. Down in the count to Fouts 0-2. Cagle, the freshman out of Virginia. He hit 409, 17 homers, 45 runs batted in. The one two. There's the first strikeout for Fouts. And it's a one, two, three inning for the junior to get things started for Alabama. Montana Fouts utilizing this movement, working this screwball low and away from Valerie Cagle, racking up her first strikeout on the day. We're back at the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One and just some of the storylines that we're following from coast to coast. Two national seeds eliminated. Tennessee goes down. Arizona State at the hands of Virginia Tech eliminated. Three national seeds up against the wall today. As I mentioned, Virginia Tech is one of those teams that has punched its ticket to the Super Regional. The team so far. Kentucky is forced to game seven, by the way, with a game six win today. So the Wildcats battling back. That is of interest to this regional, Madison, because the winner of the Lexington regional will play the winner of this Tuscaloosa regional. And Clemson and Duke playing in the NCAA tournament for the first time, each getting to the regional final for the first time in their program history. So there's the update. Notre Dame put it on Kentucky yesterday, run rule game, but Wildcats Beat Northwestern in an elimination game. And Kentucky with a victory to force a game seven. Cagle's first pitch of the second is in there for strike one to Savannah Woodard. Now, normally Madison Shipman watches softball all day and all night from February to March to April to May, right into the Women's College World Series in June. So I don't know. There's a solid single from Woodard. I, you know, this is nothing new to you. You know, you're following seven innings live in the studio. You've got multiple monitors going right now. You've got the stats open for multiple games. This is a little bit of heaven for you, but this is I all here for you. Uh, regionals definitely tests my multitasking skills, yes. and I am really working on it. I will say now having two children, they test my multitasking skills on a daily basis as well. So this is just another day at the office, so to speak, when it comes <laughs> regionals time. Plus, they're, they're great games, so of course I want to watch them all. Morgan looking to sacrifice, and it's a very successful sacrifice. She'll be safe, and this is part of the Alabama game plan. They want to put pressure on Clemson. The Tigers have struggled in the field making plays, and Alabama continues to get runners on base, continue to put the ball in play, and make Clemson make plays. Right there is just your standard fundamental sacrifice bunt. Maddie Morgan lays it down perfectly. You notice the entire infield going for that ball, and it looks like a bit of miscommunication. Who was going to get it, Kaya Keller at first base or JoJo Hyatt behind the plate? Typically in that situation, you might want your catcher to field that bunt because they have that momentum going towards first base. But just that slight bit of miscommunication allows not just a runner to advance into scoring position, but now two runners on base with nobody away. It scored a single for Maddie Morgan. That's her first hit of the regional. And here is Taylor Clark. Certainly she'll be squaring here. And that one gets away. The throw down to third won't be in time to get Woodard standing. And again, these mistakes by Clemson 
adding up. The wild pitch was costly in the first inning, and now second and third with nobody out. Well, you were exactly right, Eric. Taylor Clark turning to square on this one. A rise ball up in the zone just tips off of the glove of JoJo Hyatt back there behind the plate. And I know it's tough, especially with Valerie Cagle throwing with as much velocity as she does. But as a catcher, you got to try to do whatever you can to keep that ball in front of you. Madison, during this regional for Clemson, one of the big issues has been problems in the field. They've made six errors in the regional. Now seven with that error in the first inning. But entering today, six errors have led to six unearned runs. One with a drop ball pitcher in the circle and Valerie Cagle. She's going to induce a lot of ground balls. And I think here we're seeing Clemson just try to do too much on some of these plays there. Ansley Gilstrap overrunning that slap up in the air. That's not a ball that you can make a play on, especially with the speed of Alabama. But when you try to force a play to happen, that's when Bama's going to take advantage of it. And we've seen them do that several times already in this regional. So entering today, Clemson pitchers have given up just two earned runs in their first three games. And now the miscues costing them here, putting pressure on. You saw Kayla Davis running for Morgan at second. Second and third, nobody out. That allows Clark to swing away. Tried to check her swing, and she did. Taking a look here at Taylor Clark. Umpire said she held up. Mm. That's a close one, but <laughs> that one could have gone either way. That's up high. It's three and one. Well, the number nine hitter is on deck, but it's not just any number nine hitter. It's Alyssa Brown who's hitting 390 and is three for five in this regional. He is pretty much just an, an additional leadoff batter in that nine spot for Alabama. Clark with a solid shot to center field, and that one is gone. Three run, home run, Taylor Clark, 4 nothing, Alabama. Taylor Clark had her coming out party last week at the SEC tournament with a home run against Tennessee, and she continues that here in this Tuscaloosa Regional. Two runners on board trying to extend their lead, and Taylor Clark comes up huge. She has somebody that has embraced that next man up mentality, stepping in at shortstop when Claire Jenkins went down with that season ending injury, going up against one of the best pitchers in the nation. And she takes this drop ball outside, drives it dead center over the wall for a three run home run to extend Bama's lead. That's Claire Jenkins with her foot elevated at the backside of the dugout there. And here's Brown trying to bunt it, but she bunts it foul. If you haven't been with us this weekend, that is really part of the story for Alabama softball this year. They got off to a great start this season. They were 19-0, but then they lost their middle infield. Bailey Dowling, the second baseman, the freshman, played 25 games, suffered a knee injury, ended her season. Claire Jenkins, grad student, shortstop, 37 games, season-ending injury. For a lot of teams, you lose your middle infield, you could lose control of your team. But Patrick Murphy said his team, after some bumps, it wasn't perfect for a while, but they have figured things out. And it starts with players like Taylor Clark and Savannah Woodard stepping up into those roles at shortstop and second base to pick up for those players who are starting left off. Well, and even Claire Jenkins and Bailey Dowling are doing whatever they can in the dugout to continue to help their teammates out there on the field. So they're not sulking because they've been injured, but they are celebrating the success of their teammates that have stepped in behind them to take to take over those positions. Down low, it's two and two to Brown. You can see them constantly communicating with their teammates, strategizing. Asking them, what, what can we do for you guys? Is there anything we can do to help you out? 
Brown with a chopper, and this will be a base hit. No getting the speedy Brown at first. She has her fourth hit of the regional. And Just four straight slap. hits now, Madison. Four straight hits, Madison, against Cagle for Alabama from the bottom four in the order. And slaps like that just ruin the defense's weekend because, especially as a shortstop, when she hits it that high up into the air, when it has that kind of hang time, all you can do is just stand there and wait for it to come down. And by that time, Alyssa Brown has easily run through first base. There goes Brown. And a good throw and a good tag, and Brown is caught stealing. Well done by JoJo Hyatt. There's some good defense from Clemson to eliminate Brown, who had 23 stolen bases in 28 attempts this season. It's a great way to get momentum back on your side. A good throw and a great tag as well. You can see applied in plenty of time on the sliding Brown. A nice job to bounce back by Hyatt. Mack pulls the bat back. She singled and scored the first Alabama run. Last inning, 4 nothing tied. Again, the visiting team here in game six of the Tuscaloosa Regional. One, two to Alexis Mack. Alabama with a 42 game winning streak in the regional round. They've been perfect since 2007, the longest active streak. Oregon Street came to a close. They lost here in 2021, but it goes into the books that that streak ran through their last appearance in the NCAA tournament in 2018. Oregon taking on Texas today. There's Mac, and I think she was out of the box. I saw the second base umpire throw his arms up. Again, we're playing with four umpires here in the NCAA tournament, and that second base umpire is going to be the one who has a good look at it. And I think that was the call from Will Leiske. And remember, your foot cannot step outside of the bounds of that chalk line up at the plate. Looks like she here was a deep call for being out of the box. Here is Bailey Hempel with two down. There's strike one. How hard is it to retire Bailey Hempel? Her strikeout in the first inning was the first time that she struck out since April 10th against Arkansas. Maybe that's why we April saw a big smile June. on her it's, face. It feels like it's almost June, yes. Like, yeah, they were like, I, I haven't walked back to the dugout after striking out in a long time. Now she comes back with a bloop and a good play by Gilstrap to close ground and get there to retire the side. Three runs for Alabama thanks to the three-run shot off the bat of Taylor Clark. A team that is known for their slap game and their speed, but Taylor Clark comes up big with a three-run shot. Bama leading 4-0. All right, mark your calendars, February 17th through the 20th at the Eddie Moore Complex in Clearwater. Go to stpeakclearwaterelitinvite.com for more information as we'll be back at the beach for the very best in softball in 2022. 4-0 Bama as we head to the bottom half of the second inning. Marissa Gambarda leading off against Montana Fouts. Bouts in her last five appearances has given up four earned runs, and she's been spotted a 4 nothing lead here against Clemson. 2 and 0. Gambarda, 2 for 8 in the regional with a home run. That's how Clemson got started in the tournament. 8 0 win over Troy with four home runs.
Sweeney at the 2. Oh, it's 2 and 1. Okay, a little conversation in the circle. Patrick Murphy in his 23rd year as Alabama's head coach. We talked about the great success in this regional round, winning 42 in a row in regional play. They've won the regional each year since 2005. 61 and 9 all time in the regionals, 54 and 3 at home. Just absolutely incredible what coach. Patrick Murphy has done not just in his entire career at Alabama but specifically with this year I think he's done a great job of coaching this team to their strength historically Alabama known for their power but really a great speed team and they've been able to utilize that to get their wins here late in the season and he demands a clean padded railing <laughs> to do his work <laughs> which I can respect you don't want to get the lineup dirty Eric no, no. On a warm day, yeah. I mean, this is this is a little different because he's in the home dugout. Usually, their dugout is in the third base side, so th this is going to adjust the tan lines now because he's over on the other side of the field. That's why the <laughs> cloth's got to go in the neck. You got to protect the neck. That's always something we joke about. It's got to feel a little weird. Like, well, this isn't our dugout. The, the world looks different from over here after playing over in the third base dugout all season long at the Rhodes House. Well, we saw their record in regionals. They're a team that is used to it. That that is the standard practice and regional play that the teams flip back and forth between being home and visitor. There's strike one to Aliga Logaleo. It's one and one. Bogaleo, two hundred sixty five on the season, eight homers, thirty one runs batted in. That's off the plate. So Fouts did not walk any Tigers. Yesterday, she's offered a walk here and it's fallen behind 2 and 1. We welcome those of you who watched Florida advance to the Super Regionals with an 8 0 win over USF, a no hitter for Elizabeth Hightower, the team that they faced in the SEC championship game, off to a 4 0 lead against Clemson in the Tuscaloosa Regional, and Montana Fouts having some control issues here in this second inning. She just walked. The leadoff batter and has hit Aliyah Logaleo for Clemson with a pitch. Outs did not issue one walk in their game yesterday versus Clemson. And you can see pitching coach Stephanie Van Brinkle Prothrow coming out and having what looks like a very stern conversation with Montana Fouts here after she just hit Aliyah Logaleo, what looked like on the forearm with that pitch up and in on the zone. Not just with her pitcher, but with her infield as well. Let's take you through what you may have missed so far as Alabama jumped out to a 1 0 lead in the first. Alexis Mack led up with a single. She scored on a sacrifice fly by Kaylee Tao. The big shot came in the second inning. Number eight hitter Taylor Clark with a three run shot to center field. Alabama just doing a nice job of taking advantage when they had runners on base scoring with that big shot by Clark. Four nothing Alabama. They are the visiting team here in game number six, SEC tournament champions against the ACC regular season champions Montana Fouts, who struck out 16 in beating Clemson yesterday. Spotted a four nothing lead. Logaleo is going to stay in the game after being hit by the Fouts pitch. Valerie Cagle, the freshman and player of the year in the ACC, gave up a run in the first and a three run shot in the second. So Fouts, who's been borderline unhittable over the last couple of weeks, has walked one and hit one here in the bottom half of the second inning, and it's ball one on the first pitch to Cami Pereira. A 
Borderline pitch that Pereira swung on and missed. It's 1-1. One one. Pereira really struggled off of Montana Fouts yesterday. Three strikeouts on the day, all on different pitches. One a screw ball away, a rise ball up in the zone, and then a drop ball down in the zone as well. You can see her swinging early out of the zone here in this at-bat. That one's out of the zone as well. It's 1-2. and two. Fouts went the distance against Clemson yesterday with four hits, no runs, no walks. Matched a career high with 16 strikeouts. Pereira gets a piece. Senior second baseman, one for eight in the regional. Entering the game at 287 on the season. Clemson as a team, 295 on the season. Good mix of power and speed has led them here to a regional final for the first time in program history. Their first ever trip, of course, in their first full season as a program. Another one, two. 66 home runs for the Tigers as a team. 87 stolen bases. Opportunity here against Fouts. Down by four, but two on and nobody out. Bounce gets the strikeout, her second, one down. This is a great pitch down in the zone. This is the drop ball out of the hand of Montana Fouts. Look at the spin and the late movement on this pitch. It starts low in the zone and then moves even lower in the zone as it travels into the glove of Bailey Hemphill and gives Cami Pereira another strikeout. Here's Kaya Keller. Freshman takes strike one. You know, Eric, I'm kind of surprised with runners on first and second, nobody out, knowing that Pereira had struggled a bit off of fouts in yesterday's game, that they didn't resort to a little bit of small ball just to try to get some runners in motion and advance them 60 feet. Ground ball right side. They get the force at second. They try to turn two, and they do turn two. 3-6-3, double play to retire the side. That's exactly how you have your pitchers back when she struggles a bit, puts the two first runners on. Your defense behind you turns a double play to get you out of the inning. Toasty in Tuscaloosa, temps in the high 80s, but sunshine, beautiful weather all weekend. Alabama on top of the Tigers 4-0 as we head to the third inning. Eric Freed with the former Tennessee All-American Madison Shipman. This has been an incredible run for Alabama, 15-game winning streak. And when you add up all their runs they've scored during that 15-game winning streak and the four runs they've scored here today, they have outscored their opponents 101 to 30. It's been a combination of scoring runs and run prevention that's worked so well for them, Madison. Well, I think for Alabama, they're not just relying on one player to get it done every single time, but they've got great speed at the top of the lineup and at the bottom of their lineup to set the table for their hitters in the middle of their lineup. And I think Taylor Clark getting that three-run home run is a great example of the mentality that this Alabama team has embraced all season long. It doesn't matter who's out there, but they trust each other to get the job done. And they don't put too much pressure on just one individual player to get it done every single time but really embrace the fact that any one of them can score runs at any time throughout a game. Kaylee Tao brought in the game's first run with a sacrifice fly to right in the first. Alabama needs one win to reach the Super Regional. Clemson needs to win twice today to reach the Super Regional for the first time. Tigers 44-7 on the season. 
Alabama 47-7. and seven. If you go by the most recent national rankings, Alabama third in the ESPN.com USA softball poll, Clemson 10th. So these top 10 meet teams meeting for the second time this weekend, and Cagle gets the strikeout. That's her second one down. A really nice pitch out of the hand of Valerie Cagle. This is the off-speed, typically, typically a pitch that floats up in the zone. This one, she keeps it right there at the knees. A perfect location, low and away to Kaylee Tao and her second strikeout on the day. Cagle now with 264 strikeouts on the season. There's a bunt in front. Cagle calmly fields it and throws out Jenna Johnson, two down. This week's Sunday night baseball game, the series finale between the Cubs and the Cards. Cardinals first place in the NL Central, the Cubs second place in the Central. Our coverage will start at 6 Eastern, 5 Central on ESPN and the ESPN app with baseball tonight's Sunday night countdown. Eric, when I look at the Cubs, I think one of my favorite things in baseball now is Anthony Rizzo being mic'd up during these games. And yesterday, <laughs> even though they lost, they lost two to one to the Cards, but he was trying to negotiate giving a ball to a fan in exchange for some nachos. Now, because of COVID rules, he wasn't allowed to accept the nachos, but he caved and ended up giving the fan the baseball anyway. But great entertainment for sure. Yeah, Rizzo can do that. He's, he's an entertaining type, that's for sure. <laughs> and, I mean, who doesn't want nachos at the ballpark, even a big league ball player? I mean, I know. I know I do. <laughs> Here's KB Sides. Grounded to short in the first. Well, this feels like it could be an important inning here for the Tigers and Cagle just to settle things down after giving up one in the first and three in the second. Have a quick clean inning, heading the count one and two. They made some progress against Montana Fouts, getting a couple on. Patrick Murphy wanted to know where that pitch was. The stadium didn't like that pitch, but I think it's a great pitch. This is again the off speed out of the hand of Cagle right there in the low outside part of the zone. Ground ball through the center field and it's a base hit with two down for KB Sides. That's her second hit of the regional. She is a threat to run with two down. Well, the super regional guest list continues to grow. Madison, Virginia Tech was the first winning on Saturday. The Georgia Bulldogs are in. And Florida in after the high tower no hitter against USF and James Madison has joined the party. Four of the 16 have punched their tickets. What a fight There's that Georgia one. put up as well against Duke. Duke was the 13 seed having to play in Athens. Ended up dropping that game to Georgia yesterday. And just both of those teams throwing punches all game long, but ultimately it was Georgia coming out with a win 10 to 9 to advance to the Super Regionals. James Madison with a win over Liberty in Knoxville to earn their spot in the Supers. 27 consecutive wins now for the Dukes. Georgia was really struggling, played a tough schedule at the end of the season, ran into a red hot Mississippi State team that played their way into the NCAA Blade Tournament. But a good bounce back for Georgia. There goes the runner, and Sides, as mentioned, a threat to steal. Comes up with her 11th stolen base of the season. Almost ended up in left field. <laughs> that momentum almost carried her a little too far, Eric. It's a good jump off of first base. A good throw by JoJo Hyatt back there behind the plate as well. <laughs> <laughs> she had a big smile on her face after that one. I'm wondering if Coach John Rittman's wanted to come out to make sure that the umpires have a conversation to see if KB Sides actually left the base. It looks like they're going to have a conversation about it. Looked like she got her hand back there to hold on. I mean, she was throwing flaps down on that landing, just trying to put on all the brakes she had. 
And it looks like Cami Pereira kind of went with the swipe tag really quick. And I'm wondering if maybe if she would have kept that glove on. From that angle, it's hard to tell. Pereira's glove coming around right there, lays it on her. Ooh. Close. She might have come off the, the bag right there. Again, no video replay in the NCAA tournament. We saw it in the conference tournament, but not in the NCAA tournament. Cagle bounces back, gets the strikeout, 4-0 Bama. Has been outstanding in the postseason. They have a 23-inning scoreless inning streak going. Lexi Kilfoyle got things started, Madison, in game one. Well, her command of her drop ball in that movement. She's somebody else on this staff that throws with great velocity as well. She was feeling that drop ball, racking up 15 strikeouts, and that's what's scary when I look at this Alabama team. It's not just Lexi Kilfoyle, but it is Montana Fouts as well. Pitchers that have great velocity, great spin, great movement. Being able to move it through the strike zone, that is how they get all their swings and misses. And they have been dominant in the circle so far this regional. The last run allowed by the Alabama staff was in the sixth inning of the SEC semifinal against Tennessee. That's how good they've been in the SEC championship game against Florida. Shutout and Stephanie Van Brakel with the 17 strikeouts back in 05. Lexi Kilfer was chasing that record in game one and then she got pulled late for Crystal Goodman. We didn't know if maybe that's like, hey, I gotta do some record <laughs> protecting here. She's trying to hang on to that record over there. I wonder if she ever teases them about it, saying, hey, I still hold this one over you guys. You you are still in my rearview mirror, and as the coach, I can tell you what to do. So I've got the upper hand <laughs> twice here. <laughs> Bigum leading things off against Fouts here in the third. Tried to check, and they say she did. So now with the Alabama team in the first base dugout, they've got a good look at this check swing here. <laughs> oh, she held up on that one. I definitely yes. think she held up. It's the right call by the umpire. That does not mean the Alabama dugout is not going to try to ride the umpire a little bit. <laughs> two and two. Not just the, the dugout, but the fans as well. He's outnumbered over there. Bouts with a strikeout in the first, one in the second. Chopped up the middle and through. Bingham is aboard to lead things off here in the third for the Tigers. Women's College World Series will be back. Oklahoma City, the action will begin Thursday, June 3rd at noon Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2021 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official home for all 90 NCAA championships. While you're there, say hello to Madison because she will be there early <laughs> to take in the Women's College World Series after missing it a year ago. I have been waiting a long time to get back to Oklahoma City, and I cannot wait. So Carly Shannon will come on to run for Bingham. And now bring up the nine hitter, number nine hitter, the catcher, Jojo Hyatt. Eric, we talked last inning. We wondered why we didn't see some small ball. And I wonder here with the bottom of their order up, if they might try to put that runner in motion, get her over to second base. If the first pitch is in the indication, the answer is no. It's strike nope. one to Hyatt. Nope. Just saying that might have been a good pitch to bunt right there. <laughs> Wing and a miss. Bluff at first by the runner, Shannon, and Hyatt's down to the count 0-2. 
And Hyatt almost went for a little bit of a slap right there from the right side. Sometimes players will do that to help themselves shorten up their swings by showing that bun initially, pulling back, but still not able to make contact on that one. High at the freshman catcher, one of five freshmen in the lineup for Clemson today. Bounce yeah. gets the strikeout. That's number three, one down. Good job by Montana Fouts. Went to the rise ball in the pitch before. JoJo Hyatt held up, didn't swing, and she goes right back to it. That's her bread and butter. Good late movement for a big strikeout. Back to the top of the order for the Tigers and Mackenzie Clark flied out to left her first time. Clark with a big swing and a miss for strike one. Clark with a big rip, and I don't know if she was she looking back at Fouts or looking, you know, she had a little bit of a smile at the end of her little walk out of the batter's box. Sometimes when you take those big cuts and even when you miss, you feel like you were just that close to that ball going about 300 feet. And Clark's up there taking some healthy cuts. She had that deep fly ball out to left field in her first at bat and had really good at-bats against Fouts yesterday, so she's definitely somebody who's feeling confident up there. There's that smile that you're talking about, Eric. Well, she started with, with a look and then kind of paced there around. There it is, there like... it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's the confidence smirk right there. Yes, that's right. Trying to battle back against Fouts. Down the count, one and two. Another big rip with the runner in motion. That one fouling now, counting straight on, back. Yeah, and counting her timing's on Clark. right on. Yeah, to your point, Madison, great point. You know, with the two hits yesterday, two for three against Fouts, putting it in play today, feeling like she's seeing what Montana Fouts is bringing. That she'll make contact here. I think one of the reasons why she's been able to be so consistent off of Fouts is her swing doesn't have a ton of movement to it. We're seeing some big healthy cuts, but she's going straight to the ball. It's not loopy on the backside. Taking her hands straight to those pitches. No smirk on that one. She's just now in a zone, Eric. This is a zone. <laughs> the, the, the phrase that stands with me from John Rittman when he was describing Mackenzie Clark, he said, she's got some swag. Oh, we're so seeing she's it. We it a are seeing bit. that swag. <laughs> You've got to have that type of swag. Knowing you're going up against Montana Fouts, confidence in yourself is key. A lot of times hitters, I think when they know they're going up against a fantastic strikeout pitcher, they're almost defeated before they step foot in the box. But not Mackenzie Clark. She is up there battling, fouling off pitches left and right. And you can tell she is working to get her timing on something that she can barrel up and hit out into the outfield.
Ground ball, right side, grabbed by the second baseman, Warder. That moves the runner over. Great showdown between Clark and Fouts. Ends up with the ground out, two down. Just a battle by Clark up there, fouling off pitches over to the right side, straight behind her, down left field line. You know that's got to give you confidence and your teammates confidence that you're starting to try to figure out Montana Fouts, but she's got to pass that knowledge along to her teammates because she has figured out something with her timing because she was able to square up a couple of those foul balls. We're going to miss by Gilstrap, who grounded the second in the first. Madison mentioned before, while she was at USC Upstate, played in the NCAA tournament in 2017 and 2016. Knoxville Regional and the Auburn Regional. Offered at it, it's 0-2. Another good battle here by Ansley Gilstrap, fouling off those rise balls up and out of the zone. Again, the big thing with Montana Fouts is being able to get your timing and different batters have different approaches to shorten up their swing. And here we see, we're seeing Gilstrap choke up on the bat. You notice that space in between her bottom hand and the knob. Doing whatever she can to make those adjustments, get that barrel to the ball. Strap to Morgan. Rob Drew of extra bases. Bama comes through with the defense to keep the Tigers off the scoreboard. John Rittman had the front row seat for that play. We'll talk to him next. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Crimson Tide 4, Tigers nothing, and that final out of the inning. We mentioned that John Rittman had the front row seat. He was hoping that would be something that he'd watch go down in the corner. But, John, your team is battling and making Montana Fouts work in this game. Yeah, no question. I mean, it helps to have seen her yesterday. Um, you know, so I felt like we've made a little adjustment today and shorten our swing up a little bit. We're putting a lot more balls in play, which is, which is good. Now we just got to find the holes. You know, we've been a little snake bit early hitting ball right at people, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of fight left and, uh, she's a tremendous pitcher. We just got to keep battling and give ourselves opportunities and, and hopefully Valerie can keep us in it here. And coach, when we talked to you earlier in the week, you said that Mackenzie Clark is a player that has a ton of swag up at the plate. And I think we saw a taste of that. But what do you like specifically about her in that leadoff position for you guys? Oh, she's just a dynamic player. You know, she can beat you in many different ways. She can lay down a bunch. She hits for power, hits for average, steals bases. Tremendous outfielders you guys saw last night with the, with the outfield assist and the way she covers ground. So she's just a very dynamic player, great center fielder, great leadoff hitter for us. John, thanks very much. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. John Rittman, the Clemson head coach in his second season, the ACC coach of the year. So his star pitcher, two-way player, Valerie Cagle, after giving up a run in the first and three in the second, kept Alabama scoreless in the third inning as she gets ready to work in the fourth inning here, trying to keep it a 4 nothing game.
Maddie Morgan leads off and takes strike one. It's one and one. This was the final out of the last inning. Look at the third base coach's box. May have been going foul, but John Rittman is like, <laughs> oh. I don't know who had the better reaction on that play, Coach John Rittman or Matty Morgan making that catch over there at third base. One and two to Morgan. To Kegel, one away, to Phil in the studio. Well, Phil, one thing we've seen with Mississippi State over these last three or four weeks, uh, three-run deficit is nothing with the way that they swing the bats and can tie it up with one swing of the bat if they get a couple of runners on base. They hit the long ball. We'll see if they're able to do that in Stillwater. There's strike one to Taylor Clark. Just going to take a little walk around to let the crowd, let the umpire know what she thinks about that. <laughs> this drop ball, low and inside. We do know that an emphasis for the umpires this entire season has been to call that low pitch and drop ball moving down in the zone, low and inside to Taylor Clark and Coach Patrick Murphy not happy about that call against his hitter. One on one. I think the fans are, are trying to, to tell the umpire that maybe those pitches were in the same spot. Now, they're two different pitches. The first one was a drop ball. That one was the off speed. But this Crimson Tide fan base making sure you, their opinions are Do you want to go tell them that it's <laughs> <laughs> you got to help yourself? Ground ball to second. That's Pereira to Keller. And Clark has retired two down. Well, they've turned out here today. Big crowds all three days now. At the Rhodes House, Tuscaloosa Regional, where that home field advantage has really made such a big difference. I mean, Alabama always fields great teams, but when you take a look at a program that has a 42-game winning streak in regional play, crowd has got something to do with that, that's for sure. I know this is a tough atmosphere to play in just because the fans are, are so loud, so excited, so energetic. But it is so great just to see fans back in the stands being able to get out there and enjoy some good quality softball. I don't know about you, Eric, but I will never take a crowd for granted ever again or sports for granted ever again. No question about that. It's been great to be able to broadcast these games in a different way during this year, unlike any other just to be able to do the games and bring so many games to the fans. And as we mentioned yesterday, what was it yesterday? 47 games yesterday, Madison, <laughs> on the schedule. Just to, to be able to do it. It's been challenging for our crews to come up with solutions, but they've done a tremendous job behind the scenes. Long hours, little credit, but we thank them for what they've done. But we look forward to being in person. Brown with a chopper, you know that means trouble. Second infield hit for Alyssa Brown. She's a boy with two down. Alyssa Brown just putting on a clinic. Chopping it straight into the ground. Again, it's the hang time. It's a nice play by Gilstrap coming up, getting it on the short hop, immediately firing it over to first base. But because of the speed of Brown, she's just not able to get that throw there in time. The speed for Alabama never slumps. 
Here's Alexis Mack. Mack takes a ball, stretched her hitting streak to 12 games with a single in the first inning. Giving her six hits in the regional. One and one. Max started her career at Oregon and closing her career as a first team selection in the SEC, also on the SEC All Tournament team after going four for nine and four run score in helping Alabama to their sixth SEC tournament title. Brown will take the base with the ball in the dirt. He's in the scoring position with two down. And Brown just reading this ball down in the dirt. She was not going initially on the pitch, but she sees it skip away from JoJo Hyatt back there behind the plate. Is able to move in there safely. Bama just looking to take advantage of any opportunity that they're given. Mack puts it foul. That's chopped. Gilstrap gets rid of it quickly, but throws it away. The error is costly. A run scores, and Alabama is on top 5-0. Another unearned run given up by Clemson. And again, it's the pressure that Alabama's speed puts on this defense. Because that ball had some hang time, Ansley Gilstrap tried to rush the throw, get rid of it really quickly, and because of that, it sails all the way into right field. This one just out of the reach of Kaya Keller. Can't get a glove on it, can't keep that ball in front of her, and allows Brown to score easily. Scored a single and an error. That's error number two for the Tigers. Here's Hemphill. Hemphill with a mile-high pop-up. Gilstrap has it to retire the side. Alabama adds a run. We'll talk to head coach Patrick Murphy when we come back. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Five-nothing Alabama playing with the lead yet again. We're joined by Patrick Murphy, the Alabama head coach. You know, Patrick, a lot of numbers you can look at for telling how your team is playing, I'm sure. But one that jumps out, you haven't trailed after a complete inning in 103 innings now. So what does that tell you about this team? I didn't know that. So uh, it's uh, pretty amazing. Um, obviously, we bounce back, too, because if a team scores and we score again. Exactly. You know, um, that's pretty cool. And that's the name of the game right now in the postseason. You want to score first, obviously. But if they score, you gotta you got to answer back right away. And. You know, Montana's doing such a great job anyway. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to do that right now. <laughs> and Coach, Taylor Clark had that big home run last week in the SEC tournament, and she does it here again today. How big is it for her to be able to come through for you guys? Well, that was a that was even better hit. I think she got every bit of that. It sounded really good off the bat. And um, for her to do that in the eighth spot, that's, that's three RBIs right there. So a big hit for us. And I did want to say uh, I wanted to – give a shout out to the New York Yankees for watching our game. It was in their weight room yesterday and you guys need to know that they were all watching it. So uh, I'm really happy about that. Uh, well, we say hello to Aaron Judge, Aaron Boone and anybody else who's watching right now. Thank that's you. right. That's right. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'd like to welcome the Yankees to the growing audience of college softball fans from coast to coast. You're not going to change how you broadcast games now, knowing that 
a team in the Bronx is watching right now, Madison, you're still going to bring your All-American analysis like you brought your All-American play to the field of Tennessee, right? You're not going to change. Eric, just you know I'm always going to step up, right? And, but I oh, feel well, like absolutely. maybe they were listening to me talk about Anthony Rizzo and the Cubs earlier, and they're going, <laughs> hey, why, aren't, why are yeah. we not getting any love out here? Hey, put the mic on. Let's hear more of that. That's what we'd like to hear. Take us inside the lines. We love it. Gagel, Gambarda, Logaleo to face Montana Fouts. One to Cagle, so he may get something good to hit right here, and we've seen when that's happened, she could turn on it. 17 home runs on the season, hit two two-run home runs in Clemson's debut in the NCAA tournament. Doesn't get something to hit, takes a walk. She's aboard to start things in the fourth. Here's Phil in the studio again. That was a tough play for Lee Andrews, but we've seen her make all the tough plays, but not that time. So Louisiana jumping out down in Baton Rouge. We can tell that Coach Jerry Glasgow is getting that team fired up, ready to play LSU at home in Baton Rouge. Sarah Howell will run for Cagle. Now we talked to John Rittman last half inning. Clemson's making Fouts work. Lead off. Batter is aboard for the third straight inning. The question is, can they convert that into runs and put a little bit more pressure on Montana Fouts? Gambardo walked to lead off the second inning, and now Bailey Hempel will... Give a quick little pep talk to Montana Fouts. Fouts pitched yesterday against Clemson, went the distance, striking out 16. That 11 a.m. Central Time start. That's fouled off of Hemphill and up into the crowd. Well, it looks like it got straight off of the face mask. Looks like she says she's all right. Outs bringing the velocity, a healthy cut Oof. by Gambarda, and yeah, that just goes straight. Yeah, Bailey into the usually face. smiles and laughs things. Oh, well, there, there, there it, it was, but the smile and laugh didn't last too long after that one. That hurt. <laughs> She's back. Good velocity gets the call. It's one and two. Both these pitchers, Kegel and Fouts, right around 70 miles an hour. Down low, Gambarda tried to check. Take a look at the side view here of Gambarda. Close, but she definitely holds up there. That's a good hold. That drops down. Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Montana Fouts. That's her fourth. One down. That's a big time pitch. Right there by Fouts. That drop ball going down in the zone. Gambarda 
fouling those curveballs off, but wasn't able to get Barrel on that drop. We'll have a pitch hitter here for Clemson. It's Abby Stewart hitting for Aliyah Logaleo. Swing and a miss for strike one. In the second inning, second batter of the inning, Logaleo was hit by a Montana Fouts pitch. And right away, you can tell she really caught it there. I mean, it hurts when you get hit there just in general, but not to mention that Montana Fouts is bringing it in there 70, 71 miles per hour as well. And I think that's a big hit for Clemson as well because Aliyah Logaleo had some really good at-bats off of Montana Fouts yesterday with a couple of base hits. Eric, I'm not sure where that one missed. That was a good-looking curveball, low and away. I'm not, I'm not sure either if the fans agreed or not. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good-looking pitch, and the stick by Bailey Hemphill. Comes back, gets the strikeout, two down. When you like the spot, you throw it there again. This one may be just slightly higher in the zone. Good tight spin. Late break on that curveball. Moving away from the right-handed Abby Stewart. And Montana Fouts yet again racking up those Ks. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Four Fouts. And I think possibly Clemson coaching staff making sure the umpire is not influenced by all those wearing crimson in the crowd. And it looked like associate head coach Kyle Jamison came out to have a conversation with that home plate umpire. Cami Pereira with the chop to Morgan at third. Not in time. Good speed by Pereira down the line. She's aboard with two down. And there's that short game that I think we were looking to see from Cami Pereira earlier in this game. Decides to run through this one, slap it straight into the ground, and look at that hang time. Very close play over at first, taking another look at it here. Ooh. I don't know, when I look at that slow-mo, it looked like they might have had her out over at first. I'll bring up Keller. <laughs> Tigers had runners on first and second with nobody out in the second. They got a runner to second in the third. They have runners on first and second with two outs now in the fourth. Pops up, Tao stays with it, makes the play to retire the side. Another inning led for Alabama. 104 consecutive innings without trailing. 5 nothing tied. Regional final in Tuscaloosa. An Alabama win. They move on to the Super Regionals. A Clemson win will play a deciding game seven in Tuscaloosa. Right now, Alabama in control. 5 nothing. and bad news for the Tigers, Aaliyah Logaleo a few moments ago walking back from trainer's room. You can see that right arm after being hit by the pitch wrapped up and then she made her way down to the dugout where she saw head coach John Rittman and her teammates. So she'll be in cheerleader mode for the Tigers going forward. We wish her the very best. A little bit of a smile there. That's good to see. So Logaleo was in left field. Oda moves from right to left and Stewart, who hit for Logaleo, is in right field. And there is Abby Stewart in right. Tao Johnson in sides to bat here in the top half of the fifth against Valerie Cagle. Little tapper out in front. 
And they call her out. JoJo Hyatt sticks with it, makes the play to retire Kaylee Tao, one away. Back to Phil in the studio. Yeah, I mean, the Bulldogs, if anybody we've seen over the last couple of weeks could come up with the eight-run home run, they'd figure out a way to do it. But they're going up against the team that could swing the bats as well in Oklahoma State. So Mississippi State out of the SEC, backs against the walls now for the Bulldogs. Here's Jenna Johnson, who's 0 for 2 today. 1-1. Really, Madison, one glaring mistake for Cagle in the circle today was the pitch to Clark. We've seen the infield singles. This one's hit pretty well, but to the third baseman, Bingham, two down. A couple of errors been a problem for Clemson, wild pitches, but Cagle, after giving up that three-run home run, gave up the infield single in the fourth, then the wild pitch moved Brown to second, and then the throwing error allowed Brown to score. Put to Alabama your point, on top Eric, five nothing. In yesterday's game as well, Alabama really didn't square up the ball completely. I think the hardest hit ball all game was off of the bat of KB sides, a line drive straight to Mackenzie Clark in center field. But that one mistake to Taylor Clark was costly because Alabama was able to set the table with some base runners before her. Savannah Woodard starting off that inning with a base hit up the middle, and then Maddie Morgan getting that base hit on a routine sacrifice bunt to put two runners on board for Taylor Clark. 0-2 oh, to KB Sides, who's one for two. Valerie Cagle making her 40th appearance of the season, her 32nd start. Called strike three. Cagle gets the strikeout. That's number four for the freshman. It's a one, two, three inning for Valerie Cagle. This is the nasty off speed out of the hand of Valerie Cagle. Taking some off of it right there at the knees. She gets KB sides looking. Alabama up for nothing. Back in Oklahoma City, June 3rd, noon Eastern is when the coverage starts on ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official home for all 90 NCAA championships. Four teams taking a big step towards Oklahoma City today. Well, three today and one yesterday officially, but four teams have earned spots in the Super Regionals. Virginia Tech getting there yesterday, winning the Tempe Regional. Florida, James Madison, Georgia all winning their regionals today. So it's on to the Supers. 12 spots remain. Oh, and two the count to Casey Bingham, who singled the lead off the third her last time. Bounce gets another strikeout. That's her six, one away. Another good looking rise ball out of the hand of Montana Fouts. Rise balls are so tough to lay off of because they look like they're going to be a good pitch right down the middle, and at the last minute they break up. And Montana Fouts' rise ball not only breaks up, but it also breaks away from those right handed batters, making it really tough to get barrel on. Looks like Kaylee Town coming over to. Quickly talk to Montana Fouts after Coach John Rittman had a visit with the home plate umpire.
So JoJo Hyatt is due up. She's got the batting gloves on. Oh, they're going to bring Mojo in. Morgan Johnson, who was the big spark yesterday for Clemson. It was a 1-1 game after six. Johnson led off the top of the seventh inning for Clemson against Troy. Came up with a double, would score the go-ahead run. Three runs in the inning for the Tigers and route to a 4-2 win. So looking for a little of that mojo magic right now. Take a look at that hit off of the bat of Morgan Johnson yesterday. Clemson was having a hard time adjusting to the spin off of the pitches of Libby Baker. They decide to bring Morgan Johnson in, sparks the team with that double, ends up scoring. She was fired up going back into the dugout, and it looks like she was hit by that pitch. So she will reach base safely with one away. So Johnson is aboard after being hit by the pitch. Second batter hit by Fouts. Back to the top of the order. Here's Mackenzie Clark. Let's take a look at that pitch to Johnson. Pitch running inside. And it looks like it clipped her right there on the knee. Down low, it's one and one. Now, Coach Patrick Murphy coming out with his lineup card, but I think that's more <laughs> maybe having a conversation a about the pitch called a ball. It's a prop prior you're to saying? that. He just brought a prop out. To <laughs> All part of the strategy, Eric. Clark had a good at bat last time up against Fouts. Is 0 for 2 today. It's 2 and 1. Yeah, she ended up grounding out to second base, but fouled off several balls. You could tell that she was starting to get her timing down on these high velocity pitches. And again, we're seeing that swag that coach John Rittman likes in that leadoff position. Two and two. Another good healthy cut by Mackenzie Clark. I'm kind of surprised that we're not seeing Montana Fouts maybe move the ball even further out of the zone. I'd imagine maybe that's what Bailey Hemphill's coming out to talk to her pitcher about. Even in that last at bat, she fouled off several pitches and Montana Fouts stayed around the zone the entire time. And it seems and by doing that, Mackenzie Clark is gaining confidence up there. Different than yesterday when Fouts struck out 16 Tigers and cruised to a 6 nothing win. Line drive, two shorts. Clark is retired, two down. Check back in the studio with Phil.
Winner of this regional, Phil, will take on the winner of the regional you just showed us. So Kentucky trying to battle back. After losing to Notre Dame in five yesterday, 12-3, the long road back for the Wildcats. Playing in Lexington. And with the lead over Notre Dame. Winner of the Lexington Regional gets the winner of the Tuscaloosa Regional and the Super Regionals. Either Thursday, Friday, and if necessary, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, and if necessary, Sunday. The schedules will come out after play today. 101 to Gilstrap. Now look over at that Lexington Regional. You got an opportunity to work with Amanda Scarborough in the booth last week. And what does she like to call the hitting pitchers or the pitching hitters or the unicorns? Is that what she has called <laughs> those types of players? And Kentucky has a bunch of them on their squad. Autumn Humes being one of them coming up with that big solo shot to give Kentucky the lead over Notre Dame. One and two, the count to Gilstrap, who's 0 for 2. Swung on a miss. Fouts gets the strikeout. That's number seven. Clemson was trying to get something going. Mackenzie Clark with a line drive grabbed by Taylor Clark. And all you can do sometimes is tip your hats. Five nothing. Sixteen tickets will be punched by the end of today. Four already punched. Virginia Tech, Georgia, James Madison, unseated teams, Madison Shipman, Florida, knocking off USF today in Gainesville. Elizabeth Hightower had a no-hitter to lead the Gators back to the Super Regionals. I don't know if you feel like this could be the year where there could be an unseated team that makes a run to Oklahoma City in this season where we get back into play and back to the NCAA tournament. I think we're seeing these teams just battle and fight, and we're seeing stellar pitching on these teams as well. Virginia Tech's pitcher, Keely Rochard, ACC Pitcher of the Year, going into 10P and taking hold of that regional. Right, we saw Megan Bobian for Michigan throw a no-hitter out in the Seattle region. EYU was the team that knocked off Arizona State in the Tempe region, which opened the door for Virginia Tech. You know, for all the talk of, you know, maybe there's going to be this team that can make a Cinderella run to. Oklahoma City. Well, then you see Alabama hasn't given up a run in this regional yet. And they didn't give up a run in the SEC championship game. So Crimson Tide cruising. We saw earlier what Florida did. And then you've got the other teams like UCLA and Oklahoma who look so tough and so strong that how could you not consider them on that very short list for national champion? On well, UCLA going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fresno State. Woodard, slow roller, and holding the bag at first is Keller for the first out of the sixth inning. Speaking of Oklahoma, back to Phil in the studio. Bill, it's only a mistake if you don't correct it. And that was a correctable error. Well done. We're, we're on the same page here. And when you talk about power, look at that Norman Regional with 17 home runs and counting as they get ready to go between the Sooners and Wichita State. Both Oklahoma and Wichita State are just known for hitting the long ball in that regional over there in Norman. Has not disappointed. That one going late into the night or into the early morning, if you want to call it that. But the long ball still leaving the park, even in the wee hours of the morning. 
Strike to Matty Morgan, and the count is now one and two. Morgan reached on a bunt in the second, grounded to the pitcher in the fourth. Morgan with a little bloop foul, and we've been incredibly fortunate with the weather in Tuscaloosa, just gorgeous. Perfect softball weather. Temperature has reached 90 degrees now in Tuscaloosa, but it's been, by all accounts, very comfortable down there. We know they're having weather in other areas of the country. The Austin Regional being delayed again today. So I know in other parts of the country, they've had to fight through some things to get the softball in. That misses, it's two and two. Another chopper on the infield makes for a tough play for Clemson. And Morgan is safe with one down. Matty Morgan, not one of your typical slap speed hitters in this Alabama lineup, but she hits this one straight into the ground. And all Cami Pereira at second base can do is try to charge it, try to field that one and throw it on the run. And she's not able to come up with that one. Matty Morgan reached base safely. It is scored an error on Pereira. That is the ninth error of the regional for Clemson. And thus far, the errors committed by the Clemson defense has resulted in seven unearned runs. That's something, talking to Coach John Rittman, that he wanted to try to improve upon in this season was that defense here in this regional really struggling defensively and especially knowing that you've got somebody like Valerie Cagle in the circle. She likes to work that ball down in the zone not only to induce strikeouts but a lot of ground balls as well. As a defense you got to do whatever you can to try to make those routine outs to have your pitchers back. Laced foul by Clark who got every bit of this pitch in the second inning for a three-run homer. Just really the one mistake that Valerie Cagle has made in this game, and Taylor Clark made her pay. A drop ball up and outside, and she gets all of it, blasting that three-run shot out to center field. Clark's second home run this season. She had the big three-run home run against Tennessee that helped earn her a spot on the SEC All-Tournament team. Cagle gets Clark this time, two down. Fifth strikeout for Valerie Cagle, and here's the number nine hitter, Alyssa Brown, who's two for two today with a run scored. Five for seven in the regional with five runs scored. This time trying to go over shortstop, and Gilstrap covers some ground to get back out there to make the play <laughs> with a little bit of an exhale as she heads off. Nice job by Ansley Gilstrap going back on this ball, able to secure it. Clemson picking up the bats. Clemson, she started her first NCAA tournament experience with the bang. Madison Shipman, not one, but two home runs Friday against Troy. These balls that she hit were so hard, straight on a line out to center field, and this second one was especially impressive because it was on a changeup, a pitch that she was not sitting originally going into that at bat, but she made the adjustment as the pitch was on its way to her, and that ended up being the game-ending walk-off home run in that game one of the regional. Kegel versus Fouts. Wings at the first pitch. You know, sometimes I think we forget about Clemson, and I know we've talked about it quite a bit, but they've had so much success, and Valerie Cagle's played at such a high level, ACC Player of the Year and Freshman of the Year, that 
this is such a young team. Their leadership transferred in from other programs, and they've been great for this program. But this is a program that's still in its infancy, and here they are playing in Alabama for the first time in program history, playing in the NCAA tournament and a regional final for the first time. And because they've had such great success right from the start under John Rittman, even in that shortened season last year, they were 19-8. and eight. They won 11-12 of 12 to close the shortened season. They've had great success, but it's sometimes worth repeating that they are still starting out. Fouts gets Cagle here for out number one. Well, and what great experience for all these young players to build this program on. Not only are you making it to your first ever program's first ever regional, but also playing in this type of atmosphere in Tuscaloosa. You know that these players moving forward through the rest of their careers are going to remember these games, remember what it felt like, and try to capitalize on it. But they have had an incredible season so far here in 2021. And you're exactly right, Eric. You really forget just how young these players are. But the future is definitely bright for these Clemson Tigers. Future is bright and the future is now. You talk about a team that's already playing at such a high level and as they continue to bring players in, they obviously have great crowd support. We saw that right from the very start at Clemson and even this year with limited numbers, still a lot of energy and as we go forward and they've traveled well here to Tuscaloosa, obviously. Gambard is 0 for 1 with a walk. And there's a strike. It's 1 and 2. Montana Fouts with 299 strikeouts on the season. The 1 2 pitch from Fouts. And a foul ball is called. I think it caught a piece of. Gambarda. Yeah, definitely looked like she, she had some hesitation moving out of the box on that swing. Maybe got her front foot. Bounce ready again with the one two. Called strike three, strikeout number 300 this season for Montana Fouts. What an absolutely incredible accomplishment for Montana Fouts. 300 strikeouts so far this season. Go ahead and put another K up there on the <laughs> net. I don't think they have 300 Ks back there to, to do the whole season's worth of strikeouts, but they definitely have a ton of them ready so far in today's game. Well, that would definitely result in some obstructed view seats if you put up 300 Ks right <laughs> now. The fans now. would not be happy about that. <laughs> While they'd appreciate the sentiment celebrating their ace pitcher, they'd like to see what's happening on the field. So nine strikeouts today, 300 for the season. That's a pod. And you know, Madison, today by Montana Fouts standards, and I, I'd be surprised if we don't hear her after the game saying she, she wasn't thrilled with her command. We have seen her with impeccable command. She's walked a few here today, didn't walk anybody yesterday. But still, maybe not with her best stuff. Look at the scoreboard. It's 5 nothing, And some I good movement there, 1-2. <laughs> You're exactly right, Eric. I think that's one of the signs of a truly great pitcher to be able to still go out there and fight and keep your team in the ball game when maybe you don't have your best stuff. We've seen a lot of communication between her and Bailey Hemphill throughout this game to do whatever she can to sit down these Clemson batters. Sits down another one. Strikeout number 10 for Fouts. Double digits again for Montana Fouts. 19th time this season she struck out 10 or more. Montana Fouts striking out the side using that movement. Bama still up 5 0. Top of the seventh inning in Tuscaloosa with Alabama three outs away from a regional win and a trip to the Super Regionals. They have not given up a run 
in this Tuscaloosa Regional. Winner of this regional will take on the winner of the Lexington Regional, and Kentucky has stretched out its lead over Notre Dame in that Game 7, the elimination game. The winner moves on to the Super Regionals against the winner of this regional. How about Kentucky bouncing back after losing a 12-3 in that first game? Beating Notre Dame 7 0 earlier today, and as you mentioned, leading 4 0 top five. Little bloop by Mack for the first out of the seventh, back to Phil. All right, so a game seven there, Phil, between LSU and Louisiana. Both teams now with one loss in the Baton Rouge Regional. The winner take all, game seven coming up. Looking forward to the Oregon-Texas matchup, but as I mentioned before, some weather in Austin's going to throw that start time back a bit as Hempel takes it down low for ball two. It's 2-0. Two oh. Hempel has a 17-game on base streak on the line. Struck out in the first. First time she's struck out since April 10th. Was retired in the second and again in the fourth. This one is popped up. Another play for the shortstop off the bat of Hemphill as Gilstrap has it. Two down. Well, Madison and I are keeping an eye on these games, as many as we can. The seven innings live crew has got their eyes on every single game. They'll take you to all the action, the big plays, the big moments. You won't miss a minute of the action from Championship Sunday here in the regional round. Seven innings live on the ESPN app. Every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series. So Valerie Cagle... Her day is done and emotional as the freshman leaves the field. Gave everything she could in this regional. And the Clemson crowd and the Alabama fans will salute one of the top players in the country. Just an incredible athlete. What she's able to do in the circle and up at the plate. And in the outfield as well, you can just see how emotional she is. But she is a competitor. She has some lofty goals for her career. And I think that she is somebody that can definitely reach them. We'll take a break, tell you about the new Clemson pitcher when we return to Tuscaloosa. Billy Thompson is on for the fourth time in this regional. And she throws ball one to Kaylee Tao. Thompson, a completely different look than what we saw out of Valerie Cagle, of course, throwing from the left side. He slows down the velocity just a little bit. Low 60, 62 to 64 is where she likes to stay. She's got a good off-speed, good movement with that curveball, drop ball combination moving away to left-handed batters. And she'll also mix that change up, change up in there as well. Could not check, it's one and two. Thompson with three appearances, heading into this appearance in the regional. Four and a third innings of work, four hits, one run, four walks, couple of strikeouts. Got foul by Kaylee Tao. Tao's 0 for 2, but she brought in the game's first run with a sacrifice fly in the first inning. One in the first, three in the second, and one in the fourth for Alabama. Oh, good pitch from Thompson. Fired up, too. They'll have to make the throw to get the out to retire the side. Final chance for Clemson as... Alabama takes a 5-0 lead into the bottom of the seventh.
NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Last chance here for the Tigers. Down 5 nothing in this regional final, needing a big comeback to force a Game 7. Alabama did not yield a run in Game 1 of this regional. To Alabama State, did not yield a run to Clemson in Game 2. And they have not given up a run to Clemson here in Game 3. 5 nothing as Montana Fouts will try to close it out. She's been on a run right now, finding her command. Madison Shipman, four straight strikeouts as she gets set to work to Kimmy Pereira here in the bottom of the seventh. And not having that command is something that we really have not seen out of Mount Montana Fouts in her past couple of appearances. Some uncharacteristic hit batters, but she's really been able to zone in here in the past couple of innings. And starts strike one to Pereira, who's one for two, reached on an infield single in the fourth. One and one. Flat foul at third, and it's one and two. I like the adjustment that we're seeing out of Cami Pereira. She really struggled yesterday off of Montana Fouts. Having three strikeouts. Started off the game again with another strikeout, and then went to her short game, went to her slap. Was able to get that infield base hit in the fourth inning. We see her doing it again here in the bottom of the seventh. Chop to Fouts, going to have to hurry, but she'll hold on to it as Pereira has her second hit. Another infield single, so the leadoff batter is aboard here for the Tigers in the seventh. And another really nice slap by Cami Pereira. The game is all about adjustments. What is working for you? And Pereira has been able to utilize that slap against Montana Fouts. Look at the hang time. There's no play that Montana Fouts can make on that one. And a nice base hit to start off this inning. Big cut by Keller for strike one. Looks like the Tigers had things going in the second inning with two on and one out and Keller at the plate, but a good job by the Alabama defense turning a 3-6-3 double play end of the inning and that threat. 0-2. Swung on and missed. Strikeout number 11, one down. It seemed like Fouts turned it up a little bit on the velocity in that at-bat to Kaya Keller after that leadoff base hit to Cami Pereira bringing the ball 72 miles per hour, working up in the zone with that rise for yet another strikeout. Strike one to Casey Bigham. Bigham one for two, singled in the third.
gets a dozen. One out of way. Montana Fouts is somebody who always throws with high velocity. Early, earlier on this game, she was bringing the ball high 60, 68, 69 miles per hour. But it seems like she is really amped up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Pumping those balls in there, 69, 70. We've even seen one hit 72 miles per hour. Just another example of how Montana Fouts just continues to get better as these games go on. Tie it back in there after Johnson had hit for Popped up foul ground and reaching for it and holding on to it for the out is Kaylee Towd. Or not. Looked like she had it. She did not have it. She sold it. <laughs> I don't know. She maybe sold the it crowd caught a as part well. of the netting, so it's a dead ball. That's what it looks like. The umpires are saying over there is that maybe it hit the netting. Or no, she walked it into the opening. Here's another 0-2. Rounded the towel. She's got it, and Alabama's got another regional win. Three wins. Three shutouts. It's back to the Super Regionals for the Crimson Tide. A great performance by Alabama, but I don't think we can say enough good things about this Clemson Tigers team and what they've been able to accomplish this year. The regular season ACC champions, a team that just got started last year in that 2020 shortened season with such a young team. The future is so bright for this Clemson program, and especially for somebody like Valerie yeah. Cagle, an incredible athlete and a leader for this team with such a long career ahead of her. So many games remaining for Cagle, but you had a look at Ansley Gilstrap, the six-year senior who'd been through so much health-wise, didn't play from 2018 until this season because of all the setbacks but fought through to get here to the NCAA tournament with Clemson helping the Tigers get there for the first time and hugs all around for Ansley whose softball career comes to a close the season continues for the Crimson Tide another shutout another super regional they're perfect when it comes to the super 16 straight for them the scoreless inning streak is now at 28 for Alabama and the winning streak is extended to 16 and no surprise our Capital One player of the game is Montana Fouts who goes the distance for the second straight day against Clemson a two hit shutout with 12 strikeouts so 28 strikeouts for Fouts in this regional era two appearances as Alabama celebrates again on their home field they celebrated after the SEC tournament win Last Saturday, they celebrate a regional win, and now it's on to the Super Regionals. They'll take on the winner of that Kentucky-Notre Dame matchup there in a Game 7 in Lexington. Give a lot of credit to our hardworking crew down at Tuscaloosa. Alex and Kay and everybody in the studio, in the control room, doing a tremendous job for us. We appreciate all your hard work. For Madison Shipman and our entire crew, I'm Eric Freed. So long from Tuscaloosa. Once again, Alabama wins it by a final score of five to nothing. Time now to join Seven Innings Live.